And if you go back in history, the highest FII flow which came to India was 2009-10. In a span of about 15-16 months, we got nearly 39 to 40 billion dollars of flow. Look, 2009-10, our market cap was 45 lakh crores at the bottom. On 45 lakh crores, if you get 2 lakh crores of inflow, everything will get overwhelmed. Correct. You saw what came in 2020-2021, billions of dollars, you know, the whole market got overwhelmed. So my sense is that next couple of years, it's difficult to call these things, but somewhere in the next couple of years, we are going to get an tr- immense amount of uh, global money coming in. Ashish and I will discuss about white oaks, large and mid-cap NFO. Hi, Ashish. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning, Sudhir. Thanks for having me again. It's been a pleasure, Ashish. So uh, for people who are not aware about large and mid-cap, Ashish, I'll just give them a brief. Uh, large cap is top 100 stocks by the market cap and mid cap is the next 150 stocks which is ranked from 101 to 250. So let's let's move on Ashish. Uh, Ashish, could you please highlight the usual characteristics of a large and mid cap stock for our viewers? Yes, yeah, Sudhir. So, you know, uh, two, three things, you know, like say, for example, let me first say what mid cap is not, you know, because it goes with a lot of perceptions. Right. Whenever you say mid cap or sometimes, you know, right now we're not, that's not your question. But sometimes when we say small cap, for example, or right. when we say mid cap, even a uh, lot of times people think, you know, it will be small company. It will be very risky. Uh, you know, it may not have long track record. Uh, these are not leadership businesses, you know, because kya hota hai ki, when somebody says large cap, when you expect big names, big brands, uh, you expect companies which are leaders in their sectors. These kind of things are automatically mapped with large cap. And hence, conversely, automatically people assume that if it is small cap or mid cap, uh, then you know it must be not leaders, it must be small companies, they may not have long track record, they may not associate big brands with mid and small companies. right? So first thing to clarify is that when somebody says mid cap, it does not mean that it's not a leader, it does not mean it doesn't have brand, it does not mean it doesn't have track record, etc. First thing you should keep in mind is that a lot of time, uh, mid-cap companies are actually very big brands. Uh, They are actually leaders in their sectors, but they tend to be mid-sized only because the sector itself is small. Right. Correct. So let us say if you take oil and gas or if you take banks. So banking sector in India or oil and gas in India, you know, these uh, HPVP, these refineries or ONGC, they are, you know, scale businesses. The sector itself is huge. So sometimes what happens, businesses which are not even a leader, just because they are participating in that sector, uh, they can be large cap or they can be big. On the other hand, if you take take an example of, let's say, you know, white goods, you know, electronics and white goods. Now, take an example, Voltas. It's a household name, right? It's not a large cap company. Correct. It's been there in India for what, 80, 85 years. It was, a, you know, I think a Swiss company or a Swedish company or a Swiss company, if I'm not wrong. It was taken over by Tata's in the early 80s. But it's a mid-sized company. But as far as brand is concerned, it's right up there. Now take an example. You go out, you know, wedding season is on. You go out in every mall, you will find Manyavar. You know, that's a listed company called Vedant Fashions. It's there in every nook and corner of the country. But it's a mid-sized company. Take an example, VIP Industries. It's a household name, you know, all your luggage, everything is VIP industries. I think it's a small cap company. So the point is that first point of clarification is that very often mid-size companies or small size or, you know, mid-cap, small cap, whatever we call them, even they have very, very long track record, correct? It's just that the sector may be right now. You know, India is ultimately a lower middle class country on an average, if you see per capita income. So there are certain sectors which are yet to scale. You know, most hospitals which are listed, now say Rainbow got listed uh, or global hospitals, most listed hospitals, they are all mid-cap companies. All the diagnostics companies are mid-cap companies. You know, broking, wealth management, asset management, most of them are mid-cap companies. Correct? A lot of banks are mid-cap, Right? A lot of your, uh, you know, home finance companies and NBFCs, a lot of them are mid-cap. So that's just, I think, stage of evolution. Uh, <clears throat> mid-cap 
you know if you see one of the characteristics is that yes typically because it is less market capitalization less capital base you know sometimes they are largely owned by the promoters or owner of the companies owner concentration may be high free float may be less volatility of share prices may be very high so these characteristics you can associate with mid cap and small cap yeah, you can always you can also surmise sometimes that yeah okay you know they may not be having long track record but it's not the rule uh, the point is that if i have to give you a general differentiation i would just say that there could be great companies in any market cap uh, it's just about the size of the sector in many sectors the leader itself is a small cap or mid cap company so what can you do about it the recent rise in the large cap stocks what do you see as the road forward for the segment yeah so you know till now when i was talking uh, we were only trying to differentiate or clarify what to associate with and not associate with each of right. the market caps but if you really ask me at this point in time you know when i was talking about small cap and mid cap it must be like you know preaching to the choir because right now if you see where the market is i think everybody is very bullish on small cap why small cap people are bullish even on micro caps and even sme companies are you know hitting all time highs so right now if you really ask me from a near past perspective small and you know small cap specifically has really really run up a lot uh if i just take an example one year back so we are in now november 2023 or early december 2023 if you go back in november 2022 you know take just one year in one year nifty must be up by about 13 14% or something like that but in the same time frame small cap is up by more than 40 45% uh you know mid cap somewhere in the middle slightly less but small cap is up by 40 45% if you go two years back Two years back, you might recall at the highest point, Nifty was eighteen thousand five hundred, and last month Nifty has gone up a little bit. But otherwise, if you see till recently, two years later, Nifty was consistently eighteen and a half thousand, nineteen and a half thousand kind of range. So last two years, what we have seen is that large cap hasn't moved. Correct, and you know I'll just tell you two narratives. If you go to any stock market guy or if you go to anybody who's investing. one side of the narrative is that you know market is run by retail and domestic flows we don't need fii's you know fii's have been negative for last two and a half years you know small cap and micro cap is making money large cap is just a laggard you know big banks like hdfc and kotak they are just not moving you know they are, i think uh, they have run their course there's not much upside and you know psu cyclicals metals this is the order of the day so that is one side of the narrative other side of the narrative is that like i said you know this big banks large cap you know not making money banks are not moving all the tcs infosys hul of the world i give example of voltas two years the price hasn't moved correct so many segments of the market are not moving fii's are negative for two and a half years now if you see one side large cap not moving fii's are negative and this is one side of the story the other side is you know market is run by sips and domestic investors you know cdsl released 10 crore dmats you know cyclical works psu works small and micro cap so you might think that we are talking about two different markets i mean you know but in reality uh, sudhir they are two sides of the same coin the single number connecting these two narratives and the single number which can make these two narratives flip completely is basically us dollar right so what happens typically is that when the dollar you know in the us to control inflation they raised interest rates and you know recently the 10 year bond in us was giving 5% 10 year bond in us in dollar terms giving 5% is like state bank paying you 11% for a fixed deposit correct so what happened is that when interest rates went up the dollar really appreciates correct so when the dollar appreciates obviously indian currency and emerging market currencies they feel the heat and they kind of depreciate and as a result of that you can see that for 2 to 2 and a half years fii flow has been negative but off late there is some talk of us economy cooling off and rates kind of pausing or going down and you can clearly see that the dollar has started to cool off and the rupee has started to gain some traction now when the dollar depreciates instead of appreciating when the rupee starts to appreciate or at least stabilize this whole fii flow which was negative for 2 and a half years they can actually flip if you go back in history we've got truckloads of fii flow every time the rupee is appreciated and the dollar starts to depreciate 
so last two years the color of money was different and i think next year or two years the color of money will be more green back more uh, you know foreign in nature and what works in the market you know small cap rotating into large cap cyclical rotating into blue chip companies and you know suddenly the big banks or the large caps giving great return is not uh, out of the ordinary i think it can the whole market can suddenly flip the moment dollar loses its strength and fi flow comes in the whole market can actually uh, rotate and all these narratives can get thrown out right i was in fact i was just talking to a client we were just discussing that without the fi flows in the last two years the, market, the indian market as a whole has done so well because of the domestic uh, participation and the sip inflows on a monthly basis just imagine what happens to the market when the fi start coming back to the indian market and the domestic market remains the same or the sips keep increasing the market is there to stay and there to outperform everything else right so you know see last two years we have done well but uh, and like you rightly said last two years we have done well based on domestic flow and sip and retail uh, investors but it has done well if you see only in certain pockets like by what do i mean by pockets like i was narrating small cap micro cap psu cyclical right every day somebody is looking for a new psu to flog you know that type of thing correct correct so but on the other hand like i told you for two years large cap index is in the same place the big banks the big it companies the big consumer companies they are not moving consumer discretionary they are just not moving for a couple of years see what happens is that generally speaking okay and when you say generally speaking mean you are meaning you are generalizing so there will be some exceptions but generally speaking when global investors invest in india look global investors don't need to come to india to buy steel or coal you know they can buy steel companies listed in australia or wherever They are, or I mean, steel companies listed in you know anywhere like say Arcel or Mittal or a Chinese or a South Korean or a Japanese steel company because steel is a global commodity. Coal also they can buy some uh, Australian company or whatever they want, right? Because it's a global commodity. But why do foreigners invest in India? They invest in India for the HDFCs and Kotaks and the uh, you know consumer discretionary and the big pharma companies and the big IT companies or the mid cap IT you know those kind of things because they want. they will invest in india where india is good at correct or to participate in india's domestic economy that's why i said that you know when domestic people like indian retail investors or indian traders or you know equity investors when they are the biggest it's great that they are dominating and they control the market or they gave a floor to the market it never went below a certain level that is great but there are types of investors which have preference for some segments of the uh, market right like most people are wired to buy cheap but cheap in price correct if i tell you on a lighter note uh, you will find that if you take number of shareholders and share holding pattern it's the foreigners who buy the hdfcs and kotaks of the world it's the local investors who buy the yes banks and the uh, canara bank pnb of the uh, world right, right just right. see the holding pattern you will realize what i'm trying to say so global investors typically buy you know esg governance longevity sustainability free cash flow uh, india's growth story those kinds of things right whereas domestic investors prefer to buy cheap they prefer to buy small cap they prefer to buy micro cap they prefer to buy psus and cyclicals so there has been that difference in terms of preferences so that's why i said that you know when the color of money meaning that you know if domestic money is complemented or say for example overwhelmed by a surge of huge fi flows then the market can rotate in favor of large cap and it can rotate into something else and if you go back in history the highest fi flow which came to india was 2009 10 in a span of about 15 16 months we got nearly 39 to 40 billion dollars of flow look 2009 10 our market cap was 45 lakh crores at the bottom on 45 lakh crores if you get 2 lakh crores of inflow everything will get overwhelmed can you saw what came in 2020 2021 billions of dollars you know the whole market got overwhelmed so my sense is that next couple of years it's difficult to call these things but somewhere in the next couple of years we are going to get a tr- immense amount of uh, global money coming into india and the majority and, uh, of that will be in the large cap space 
it would be typically large cap or mid cap uh, you know uh, upper you know the because free float is important see when big money comes in free float and liquidity uh, longevity sustainability all those things are very very important i am not batting for one side or other i am just saying that never get caught up with near past narratives right never get caught up with recent narratives never assume ke abhi pichle 2 saal mein jo chala hai wohi aage chalega that's why i said couple of times when the color of money changes all the narratives change so moving on to the stock mix for large and mid cap segments and also will you be considering anything for the small cap as well see when we manage the large and cap yeah so see you know when we first of all when we create any fund right we have you know open ended funds have 5 10 15 20 30 you know like long 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 journeys uh, long track records to be built over a period of time so when we launch a product you know when regulator gives us approval we hit the market so we don't like really really uh, time it but right now it is contextual so on your question when we build a large and mid cap portfolio it will be more or less half and half large cap mid cap so because what's the ethos or what's the concept behind the product it's the large caps which give you know you imagine large cap is like a marathon runner and you imagine mid cap is like a sprinter correct so you can if you have that visualization you can imagine that the large caps give you the you know uh, low double digit compounded long term stability whereas the mid caps are supposed to outperform and give you the uh, you know growth spurt or the additional return small cap you know close to zero or negligible see typically in a large and mid cap fund we would not want to invest in small cap but even if there is any small cap it would be like you know one or two exceptions and i'll tell you why as per sebi regulation the top 100 stocks ranked by market cap is large cap and then the next 150 stocks ranked by market cap is mid cap now let us say you have a mid cap stock whose rank is 247 and 6 months later the rank becomes 253 so technically it will be classified as small cap but small it's not cap. that the intention is to go around looking for a small cap to buy so you'll always say that yeah you might have on a exceptional basis you might have couple of small caps why that would happen that's what i've explained to you but broadly the fund is supposed to be half large half large cap half mid cap understood thank you sir uh, thank you for sharing your insights i'm sure our audience is appreciate your time and expertise uh, all the best all the best for the cafo I'm sure it is also going to be a great success as well. The recent episode has been. Thank you, thank you, Sudhir. Thanks for your time and thanks for inviting me.